demonstration tonight. Guy Magellanus is a San Francisco native and a self-taught watercolor artist. He has painted since childhood when his grandmother recalls that he was more interested in painting the walls and curtains with his food than eating it. So I guess you could say he comes by it organically. Guy became a full-time artist in 2007 and was featured in a public education TV show called Art to Art. In the show, Guy Magellanus and Joyce Faulkner, two artists with a fun chemistry between them, each painted the same image in their own unique style and from their own viewpoint. Uh, CWA, CWA co-director of programs, Pat Way, told us she loved watching his show and she thought of Guy as her Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Guy started teaching in 2005 and continues teaching classes and workshops from his studio in San Carlos, as well as other venues, including Filoli Gardens in um, Woodside. Guy says... It's okay to be afraid. You know you're alive. Just don't let that stop you from painting and learning. I'd like um, I'd like to welcome tonight's demonstration artist, Guy Magellanus. Thank Guy? you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, I haven't uh, been at Filoli since uh, the lockdown. So I miss uh, teaching out there, but um, I do go there uh, frequently. But um, yeah, so I haven't taught there since uh, um, uh, COVID and the lockdown. So, but um, yeah, I do have uh, classes uh, here. I do online classes, but I also have in-person classes here. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, did you have any questions for me or anything, or should I just get started? Um, yeah, why don't you go ahead and get started, and then uh, we'll ask things as they come up along the way. Okay, excellent. So I, I just, what I have behind me are some uh, classes. I do Friday guided classes, and uh, it's all on Zoom and YouTube Live. And so everybody gets a line drawing, and uh, a materials list. And then every Friday from nine to noon, I go ahead and paint and, and uh, they follow along. Everything is recorded so you can uh, follow along with me live or you can take a break and, and go back to it later. And uh, so I offer all of these up as kits and um, I'm gonna be showing you this one here, I should take it out of the glass scene. Um, this was a very tonal painting, which was mostly just blue. I love it. So, and it was a snow scene. And this is uh, in my cousin, she lives up in Eastern Oregon. So this is looking out her uh, dining room into uh, a barn that's out in the back here. And so I don't get to see snow often, but this is her picture. And so she gave me permission to paint it. And I just love it, but it's also very tonal, all very, very blue. And uh, why don't I just go ahead and get started? So I'm gonna switch views. So when my students uh, purchase a, a class, what I do is I make a line drawing of the image and we're all painting on a quarter sheet of watercolor paper and I make a line drawing but I'm able to print 11 by 17 paper. So I can print like this, but most people can't. So they get, I made it so that they can print this out and uh, there's a top and a bottom and you could tape them together and it, it turns into a sheet like this. 
And then all they have to do is just transfer it onto their watercolor paper. And what I do is I line up my lines here and I folded it over and taped it so it's a hinge. So I get my handy dandy carbon paper, make sure that it is carbon side is touching the paper and I get a red pen so I can tell where I've drawn and sketched. And then I do some double checking, make sure that I'm not drawing here but on the watercolor paper. And this is such a detailed drawing. Um, I've had some students where they finished and they go like this and their watercolor paper is clean, but the backside of their line drawing has all the lines. So that's why I would say check before. And then what I do, and this is Sorrel. I love this um, uh, carbon paper or the transfer paper. It's Sorrel, it's wax free. And it's a light gray color. And I'm just going to smudge. So I got a smudge here, but it's real easy to wipe off. Um, what I like about Sorrel is that it's some uh, papers, some carbon papers are really too dark and you can't get them to be lighter. So once I put a line down, this is the hard part for some people, I go back over with a pencil and I just sketch in my important things. What happens is that when this paper gets wet, this carbon or graphite is gonna be moving along with the water as you get it wet. But what I do is uh, to pick up the smudges and any excess, I just get a kneadable eraser and I just roll it and it lifts up all the carbon and any excess. And so I can see my lines, which is wonderful, oh. but I don't want it to look like a coloring book. And on this one, I just went ahead and I didn't draw every single little thing in. I'm just gonna be capturing some important things in a moment. Okay, so I've lifted up all of the graphite smudges and everything. Once I've got everything on, I just, you know, I double check that I got everything where I needed it and I don't need that anymore. I go ahead and I put my stuff that I don't need away. Now I get, we're gonna talk about color choices. So let me just move. So here's my palette. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just adding a little tiny bit of water to the colors I'm gonna use and um, one moment. So this, this is the image I'm gonna be painting, but it's basically blue, but there's a little bit of pink and a little bit of yellow here. And there's just a little tiny bit of gold out here and kind of pink, but everything else is on the blue side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get my brushes wet. I'm gonna make some puddles of color. And I'm gonna put some phthalo out here. I love phthalo blue. Very, very staining, but we need a lot of it. And also, I'm gonna make a puddle of endanthrin blue, which is cooler and deeper. And I'm also going to get some French ultramarine blue out here, which is so bright and grainy. I love it. So we're basically going to be working with phthalo and uh, endanthrin. So I'm going to put that aside so my puddles are ready for me. Now it's so hot that everything keeps drying up. My students are here painting away and um, 
they have to keep adding water because everything is drying so fast. So here is um, one of my favorite colors, which is transparent yellow. Now I will remind people that we sent out a list of the supplies that you use in our email with the link. So um, if right. you refer to that, um, they, they should have it. Yeah, so I uh, love these brushes, which are the low Cornell, but he went out of business or he sold the business and then he created a new one. And this is, so it's, cause I love these brushes. Um, and his new uh, uh, brand, it's called um, by King Art, and it's the original gold. And if you're going to get these, make sure it says Max Round. Don't just get the round, get the Max Round. It has an extended point. They're very uh, bouncy, has a gorgeous, gorgeous point. And I get those also in the smaller. So I, I have like 12s, 14s, and then I have a few sixes here. And I have a brush that I just use for yellow, any of the yellows. Then I have a brush that I just use for my reds and oranges. And then I have a brush that I just use for my blues and my darks and even my greens. And um, that way I could just keep painting. I don't have to stop and clean off a brush where if I was using this blue brush and I clean it off and I want to be painting with yellow, some of that blue is going to be leaching into my yellow and it's going to start turning green on me. So I'm just funny that way. Ha ha ha. And then um, I love these brushes also. These are the rosemary brushes. They have an incredible point, but uh, these brushes over here, are all synthetic and this is a synthetic and natural hair mix. So it looks kind of rough here, but once you get them wet, they have the most incredible point. And if I don't want to be disturbing a layer that's underneath, if I'm glazing over something and I don't want to disturb the color underneath, these are the brushes that I'll use. And then this is also my Princeton Art and Brush Company it's a series 4050, and it's a flat angled, one and a half inch flat angled wash brush, which I'll be using a little bit later. And then I have my, the oldest, this was the first low Cornell brush that I got, and it's so ratty, and I use this for softening and for getting shapes wet, which you'll see. And I love having a pipette, so I can add water here if I need to, I don't have to be getting my water dirty by dunking a brush in there to add water. But anyway, so these are the colors that I'm gonna be working with. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and switch over to, uh, so you can see what I'm gonna be painting. Cool. So this is the image I wanna be painting. Um, I love this image because of the fence, love the fence, love the light peeking through, and I love all of the branches here. The sky is kind of uh, eh. So uh, she had taken another picture, and this sky over here has some clouds going across. And in this picture, they were kind of just blown out. So I use this as an example for what I want in the sky. And like I said, this is a very tonal picture, meaning it's just basically blue. So what I want to do first, before I put any blues in, I want to work this area and I want some yellows and pinks in the sky over here. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. And I'm going to do that right now. All of a sudden, I'm nervous. Putting a, so what I'm doing is I'm just getting the paper wet where I'm going to be adding some of the yellow and some of the pink. And I'm just getting it damp there. Not super wet. So I had a little smudge here that I didn't pick up all the way, but look at the water just took that away. 
And that's why I go over some of these uh, lines with a pencil so that it stays in there so I don't uh, erase it away. Okay, so right about here, I wanna have some yellow. So I'm putting it down, but I am moving the flat of the brush and just pulling that out really lightly. I don't need too much. And I'm going to switch and put some pink in here. So I'm just getting a little bit of perm rose. And I'm just going to go ahead and, ooh, that's a lot of pink. That's more than I wanted. So all I have to do is just get my brush wet, put it down. And I'm going to be moving in. And I'm going to dilute this. I'm getting my softening brush, which I got this area wet in the first place. And I'm just going to be pulling some of that out. And that looks so much better already. So I just have a hint of color here. I love it already. It's beautiful. All right. <laughs> So <laughs> but don't stop now. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to go right here where the lights are. Some people, as they were painting, they thought this was the sun coming up, but there's an actual external light. But if you want to pretend it's the sun, you go ahead, whatever, whatever floats your boat. So I'm just going to go ahead and start right in here. And I'm just working, because this is a smaller area, I'm just working wet on dry instead of getting everything uh, wet first. And I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit of perm rose, just so that we have that nice little glow that's happening in here. So I can encroach a little bit, add a little bit here and there. And there's also some alongside. So I'm just gonna start off by putting the perm rose down first and I can disperse and lighten this with a little bit of yellow. So I'm just using the tip of the brush and putting these in little locations. So I'm just being real faint just so that I can uh, see and find it. Once I start putting the blues down, I start losing everything. I won't see everything. So that's why I want to put this in now before I lose it. And I'm just wicking up a little bit of excess. And I am not being too uh, careful or treating this as too precious. So if you see where I'm going over in some areas, it doesn't matter. I'm just working and underpainting right now. I'm just blocking in some of these areas. Okay. So you'll be putting the blue in later that goes around those different. Yeah. So this is all damp. I want to put a sky in. So I'm kind of working all the distant stuff before I work all of this brighter stuff. So I wanna set my sky in, which is behind the barn and behind all the trees, right? Mm -hmm. And I kind of wanna set my glaze of blue down here also. So I'm working, uh, putting distant stuff in first so that I can start being bolder and blocking all of this in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so now, What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my foreground in. So this is still damp, right? And I want to give this a chance to dry. So I, I want to work my sky back here, but this is still a little damp. So I'm going to be working down here and putting a blue in. So this is where my flat angled wash brush comes in. And so what I'm going to do is just get this damp. with water 
And Kathleen would like to know, um, when you softened earlier with a brush, was it a dry brush? It's a damp, clean brush. Okay. So uh, there's times when I want to add water, which is a great question. There's times when you want, want to add water, but there's uh, times when things are drying. And if you're just wicking some things up, you're using a thirsty brush. So it's clean, but it's damp. Not, you're not adding a lot to it. And over here, when I was wiping away, it was just a real uh, almost dry brush. I was taking the moisture that was here and just moving it off, letting it disperse into this. If that, I hope that answered your question which was a good question. Okay, so now that this is damp, I'm gonna go ahead and put some blue down and that is way too much. So I'm adding, immediately adding water. So I'm just dipping my brush in water and ooh, and I'm just gonna let this move down because I want this to disperse out and soften out. It's too heavy for me. And I'm just gonna let that move on down. I want it lighter, which is wonderful about watercolor. We can just lighten it up just by adding water. And because we got this damp already, it's just gonna be moving down. And I'm just encouraging it to move with gravity. Okay, so I've got the foreground done. I've got where my lights are gonna be. Now what I'm gonna do so that I can keep working is I'm gonna get my, not mine, but the barn, which is right here, I'm gonna get the face of the barn in there and I'm gonna use the smaller brush. Here it is. I'm gonna work with a thin amount of the indanthrin because this got really heavy. Oh, and before I move on, what I wanna do is I wanna wick up some of that excess. So I don't know if you can see this, but there's a big bead right there. So I'm just wiping, taking that and wiping that up. And is this a 140 pound paper? No, this is Arches 300 pound paper. If I was using um, a 140 weight paper, this would all be rippling and buckling because I didn't, it, it wasn't stretched. So this is 300 pound paper. Good question. And is it Arches paper? What do yes, you use? Arches paper, just like in my notes. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is this is dry enough. I'm just gonna go ahead and block in the little barn here. And like I said, this is just an underpainting. So I can put this in, but I don't have to be too uh, careful. We're just blocking some of these shapes in. So this is the face of the uh, barn. There's some lines that you have to get right, but so this is where I'm looking. Not gonna worry about blossoms or anything like that, because we're just, like I said, blocking it in. But now I wanna get into the doors. And my favorite part about this barn is how it disappears over here. So I'm just gonna get this part damp. I guess this is like the, the roof and the eave of the barn over here. And it's really pale in the picture and I love that. 
time and nut for little things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more color here, but I'm gonna let it fade away to nothing out here. Okay, so I've got more barn to do, which is right over here. And this is again, this is in Danthrin blue. So it's, it's on the cooler side. And just putting it in, filling it along. I have to turn it this way so I can see if I got everything. Oh, and I did miss something. So right underneath the roof, there's that little eave or shadow underhang, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just putting that in. So everything is kind of set. My sky is kind of set. My light areas are kind of set where the light is creeping through. And I've got my foreground in. So now when this is dry, I can put my sky in. Okay, so... I'm going to put this aside because I've already done this step. And here I am. So let me just put this away. We have somebody that would like to know um, what does an angled brush do as compared with a flat brush? I, um, you know, I have uh, both. I have the flat brush and I also have let me see if I move this line better. Um, I love an angled brush because I can get into corners. I can see things a little bit better if I if I need to go in. It, I just like this better. If you uh, if you have a flat brush, get an angled brush. I think you'll like it better. So as you're cutting in, you could kind of see where you're going if you're using the side of the brush. So I have a bunch of these that are flat, but this is the one that I'm always using. I have two of these, one that I work with color and one that I just usually keep uh, just for getting something wet. Well, that's good to know. I've never worked with an angled brush. Yeah, so uh, try it. You'll, you might really, really like it a lot. It might change your life. Oh my God, I'm too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to work on the sky and if you remember this photo was blown out and this one i went ahead and i added some pinks and some yellows and we so that it kind of matched with the light that was going over here and i want to be painting my sky in so that's what i'm going to be working on right now and I'm gonna work upside down. Oh, one other thing, I'm just gonna show my palette again. So it's really warm and my colors keep drying up on me. So every now and then I have to either add water and keep mixing my palette because these colors are just gonna start inten intensifying even more. So I need a little bit more in Dantherin. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I did a big in Dantherin wash down here, okay, now I can switch cameras. When you saw me doing this big wash, when I put a color down, there was a little grab of color that went here. And that's because I didn't fully mix my uh, watercolor in the puddle. So I had a, a big swipe of uh, indanthrin pigment going across there. But I fixed it by just wiggling a damp, clean brush, adding water and letting it move down with gravity. So now I'm gonna work on this guy. I want to stay away from the top of the barn because I don't want to be painting the barn. I'm going to be going over the branches and I'm just really concentrating on the sky.
and I don't want to be going up to the barn either. Hmm. So I'm so it's easier for me to see with an angled brush where I'm going versus a big clunky flat brush. So this is just clear water. You're just. Um... Yeah, because I'm going to be working wet and wet, just like I worked down here. Okay, so I'm working with the sky. So I want there to be a little bit more phthalo in the sky than mostly in dampens. So I'm going to be putting a nice mix of phthalo. And I'm going to start at up here and just put that down. And I'm going to let that move because it's all wet on wet. And I have to make sure that these were going to be where all the branches and trees and stuff are going to be. So I have to make sure that this is threaded through. And I'm going to add some down in here. So and by working wet and wet and just using kind of the tip of the brush, I'm able to get that evoke uh, a kind of like a thready, cloudy morning sky. And I'm happy with that. I'm gonna turn it right side up so I can take a look at it. I'm gonna let this kind of soften out. So you See, didn't totally, you didn't really go over the yellow and pink, you just kind of went threaded into it? Yeah. I want my pinks and my yellows to be there. So it cut, I, there's blues that traveled in, but I'm not letting the, otherwise it'll just turn green, right? Yeah, okay. So I, and I am working an underpainting right now. If I need to add more color, I could do that, but I could do that later. So I'm just setting all of my areas in. So. I don't like how this is ending right here. We're going to have uh, trees over here, but I just don't want to have to have a harsh ending to it. So I'm just going ahead and softening some of that stuff out with a damp, clean brush. Not a wet brush, but a damp, clean brush. I'm taking a look and seeing if I'm okay with the sky the way it is. And I think the sky looks pretty darn good. But it kind of got a little green right here. So with a damp, clean brush, I just wiped off. Ooh, and I just messed that up. Dang it. So with a damp, clean brush, I took off a little bit right here. And I'll take off a little bit right there, too. It just kind of puddled up. Now, I just made a big boo-boo. Uh, but this is all still damp. So what I'm going to do is get my blue and put that back down. And let that kind of just soften out. There, I like that better. That's what I love about working with uh, wet on wet. You can, uh, things will soften out for you. Right here, I should leave that alone. Okay, so we've got a foreground that's kind of set in. We've got our lights located. We have our barn located. And now what we can do, this is all dry, this is all wet. So what I can do is I can work on the little snow banks, which are down here. What I love about these is it, it just gave it a little bit of texture and they're soft edged. And uh, I just love the lumpy little shapes. So what I'm gonna do Let's get my little brush.
And I'm going to get some of these just a little wet because everything is drying up on me so quickly. And I'm going to get a little tiny bit of endanthrin and I'm going to put that in into these wonderful little crunchy but soft little snow banks. Mm. So do you ever work on it? 140 pound paper? Yes, I work. I use 140 pound paper a lot of times. So, but what I do is I stretch them over wooden stretcher bars, which I can show you a little bit later. Um, and uh, uh, if I'm using it, one of my students loves working on 140 paper, but she loves working on sunsets and skies. And it's so hard for me to get sunsets and skies like this on 140 paper because the paper wobbles. So instead of having something going vertical, you're now having your, your clouds or your strata or whatever, and you have to compete with, um, what do I wanna say? All the little mountains and valleys that are created by the wet paper on the 140. Okay. So what we've been doing is we've been spraying, um, getting, uh, what do I want to say? What's it called? Okay, wait, before I get too carried away, I'm picking up a little tiny bit of French ultramarine blue now. This has been in Danthrin, and I'm just putting a little bit of French ultramarine blue down here at the bottom edge of these wet areas. Um, Oh, so what we what I've been doing for her is we've been getting plexiglass. So she's working, let's say she's working this, which is a quarter sheet of watercolor paper, right? Yes. And so it's uh, 11 and a quarter by 15 inches. And so her plexiglass is about an inch wider on either side and on the bottom. And we spritz the plexiglass, put the paper on, and then get the paper wet and it it's nice and flat and it sticks to the plexiglass. And if you're working on skies and all of that, needing to work wet on wet, it keeps the paper nice and flat. Now, when it dries, when it totally dries, it'll come up off of the plexiglass, but while you're working with it wet on wet, it really grabs onto the plexi. So we've been having fun with that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so if you're, it sounds like you love 140 paper, so you should try that. I, I like less expensive. <laughs> yeah, I, I like using what is going to be best for my image. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just funny. I am very frugal, but when it comes to painting, it's funny how um, I don't mind paying for things depending on what, uh, how I want the image. It's the, the image is going to uh, let me know what it needs, what kind of paper it needs. Okay, so again, I'm going ahead, got that wet. I'm putting some endanthrin in here. I'm not being too careful about the edges. I just want to get everything wet all at the same time. So I'm not going to be creating any um, blossoms or anything like that. So I'm going ahead, putting that in. And now I could get my brush and clean up these edges now that everything is in. So I like to work a shape, get that shape in, and then while everything is wet, then I can go and mind my edges. I hate when I see people putting their edges in and by the time they get, if they started here and ended here, then they want to fill this in. This is all dry. So by the time you go to fill it in, you've got a double density line there. So that's why I like to paint the shape in first and then put my uh, edges in. That makes sense to me. That was a good tip. That sounds like a really good idea. 
going to use and that. Now, and now I'm going ahead and just dropping in some French ultramarine blue. See how it's settled in here? It's really lovely. And we're just working wet and wet. We're just setting this up. That's all. I love these little snowbanks. I'll leave that alone. So this is got this is wet, but it's starting to dry. There's no sheen on here anymore. Um, where I'm going to be putting my trees in, all of the phthalo and the sky color that came in, I softened it out. Um, let's see. So this is kind of, well, I didn't get this wet, so I can now work on the, um, the, we worked on the face of the barn and the eaves underneath, but now we can work on the side of the barn and the roof. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna basically just use phthalo blue because, if you can see the barn roof and the side of the building is very pale. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I gotta keep my eye or keep my arm from stamping over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and wick up a little drop that I just put in there. So I'm going ahead getting my phthalo and, and this is such a staining color. And instead of working wet on wet, I'm working wet on dry, putting that in. It's been such a gorgeous day, but it's been so hot. And here I am working under lamps and lights. And it, I'm just getting hotter. <laughs> <laughs> and right in here, oh, I didn't draw my pencil line too well in here. This, there's a little bit of a roof up here. I love this color, can you, phthalo can you blue. Can a little bit closer so we can see the brushwork? Sure. So when I zoom in, uh, what happens is I'll start painting, but I might be painting over here, which I'm moving around. So you're going to have to tell me if I'm in or out of view. Okay. And I'm going to go along here. Like I said, this is a very staining color, but I love it. It just is happiness to me. I'm such a nut. Okay, so I am glazing over this. So I am going to get this damp where in these areas I worked wet on dry. Um, the reason why I'm getting this damp is because I don't want to have to pull color in here and I want to keep my yellows and pinks right where they are. Okay, now I'm gonna have you zoom back out. Because you've got, okay, that's good, that's fine. No, just tell me to move. <laughs> there, that was better, right? Yeah. All I had to do was just move it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now this is where it's dry. I'm putting that color down and this is where it's all damp. So it'll just soften out for me just beautifully. Hmm. And that's all I need to do right now here. So we've got our sky in. We have some color in our sky. We have the barn in. We have our lights in. We have our foreground. It's very pale, but we have our foreground in and we have our little snow banks. 
And I did such a nice job on them. But um, we need to move on. And um, we're going to go to the next step, which is starting to put all of these fun guys in. All of the trees. That's our next step, dropping all of this in. So is what time is it? So is this a good time to take a little break? Yeah, we can take a break now. We've got about an hour left. Okay, great. So yeah, let's take a quick little break. And then, because um, what I want to do is I want to show you also how I use the 140 paper and I need to get, so I can show you how I use it. Okay. Okay. I'll be, I'll be right back. Okay, we'll take five. All right. I'm just going to hit this with, I'm going to mute because I'm going to hit this with a dryer just for a little bit. Okay. Thanks, Guy.
All right, so I'm back. And now the scary part. <laughs> so what I wanna do is I wanna work all of this and pull all of this in and then work this way. So uh -huh. what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be mixing and mingling colors on the paper and in the palette. So I'm just gonna um, shoot over to the palette. So here's, I, I don't have enough color and I need to make sure that I've got enough in dantrum in here, it keeps moving. I think my table is tilted. I'm gonna make sure I've got enough of indanthrin in here. So I will be continually adding and modifying this uh, palette here as I'm, cause I'm gonna be covering a huge area. So I, this is what I meant when I dragged um, the brush wet on uh, wet on wet, but there was a little crayon chunk. So I don't know if you can see there's little chunks in here. So I have to be sure that I'm mixing this up thoroughly. Uh, okay. I put it on the paper and I'm gonna need some more perm rose. So I'm gonna be working with a mix of phthalo blue and indanthrin, but I'll be dropping in um, some perm rose. Now it looks red as I'm looking at the camera, but it's really a pinkish, warmish pink color, but um, that's just the camera picking it up. Okay, so I'm ready. Okay, whoops, wrong. Here we go. So it seems like you have very um, exquisite, exacting brush strokes. Is that something that just comes with time and practice? It, yes, it comes with um, a, a time and practice. And uh, as you're putting your brush down, do you want a big swath? So you're using the side of the brush or are you wanting points to come out? So you'd be using more of the tip of the brush. And like you saw um, here, let me just do something. Good question. I could do something that I'm not so scared of. So uh, let's get this wet. And I'm just gonna use a different color instead of the blue. So I could go this way or I could go this way. And if it's too much or it ends too abruptly, I could get a damp, clean brush and just soften and stop some of that. So what I see a lot is people will be wanting to stop. They might want to put a, a line of clouds down or maybe veining on a flower petal and they go ahead and they put something down, but they end up with a ball at the end right like that a little it to me it looks like a palm tree but mm -hmm. if i get a damp clean brush i can adjust that uh -huh. so without a lot of work and so when i put things down where i want a little line um, what I'm doing is I'm putting my brush down and then ending off the paper, like if this, this was an airplane taking off. So I'm not putting it down, stopping, and then lifting up, if that makes any sense. Ah, okay. Okay, so if, let's get this wet. So if I stop and then pull up, I end up with a little ball at the end. But if I kind of, well, it didn't take off very well there. Uh, you, but what's nice, 
Let me try a smaller brush. There we go. So we lift off the paper, okay? Versus putting something down and then and stopping and then lifting the brush off. But I just showed you that it's real easy to adjust that just by getting a damp, clean brush and you can alter how that looks. Um, so I always say this little trite thing, and that is um, perfect practice makes perfect. You could be practicing the same thing over and over and over and still getting the same results. So you have to try, as you're trying it, if you're not getting the effect you want, you have to try something else. So it's the pressure of the brush and how you're lifting it off. And, and you will get a, a, a sense of how things will work. Okay, so now I'm scared, but it's good to be scared. You know you're alive. I'm mixing my color, which is a phthalo blue and in dantheran mix. And I just don't want it too heavy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start putting that down. Now that's too heavy for me. So immediately I just uh, dip my brush in water and I'm just gonna start putting these shapes in. And I'm just gonna move, let gravity work with me here. And I'm gonna let these colors mingle and move on the paper. So that, let's get that to move a little bit. There we go. There's little bits of sunlight. It's not just a full shape. So I'm leaving little bits here and there. And before I move too far, I'm gonna be dropping in another color. Now it's funny, cause I was painting last night, but we didn't have the heat that we're uh, all of a sudden having today. So I'm gonna let that move, re-wet just by tilting the paper. And I wanna wick up some of that excess. There we go. So I just got a thirsty brush and just wicked up some of that excess. And now I'm getting some perm rose and I'm just gonna drop that in here and there and let that just mingle on its own. And I wanna do that while it's still wet so that it can move. And to continue on. So I'm letting everything just mingle. So you just dropped in um, some permanent rows in spots to vary the blue color. Yeah, so that it's not just flat. Because what I loved about this is that there was a, a variety of colors in there and I wanted it to be kind of loose and this is still wet, so I can drop in a little bit more. And I want little bits of sky peeking through. And before I move forward, maybe I'll put a little bit more in here. And are you using a paper towel or something else to dry your brush to get some of the moisture out? Yes, yeah, so I always have, let me, I'm just gonna scooch my palette over. So I have paper towels wadded up here. Here's my, and it's right next to my palette. So you can see I'm wiping off any excess and testing things out on that paper towel. 
And is your paper flat or in general there or at an angle? Um, the what I'm painting on? Yes. It's flat on the table, but I keep going like this. Oh, I'm I see. Okay. Simple, so you're so just moving I'm, it from time to yes. time to work the gravity angle. Yeah. So I love uh, working flat. Sometimes I'll have it tilted a little bit, but um, I want to be in full control. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> it's funny, um, when I'm painting, I'm having a ball, but then when I'm painting while people are watching, I was thinking, oh my God, they must be so bored. And I'm just dropping in some pinks here. Before things dry up, I want there to be a really nice mingling of colors. Yeah, that really makes it come alive. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is come in here. There's a little bit of a snow is hitting this branch, or light is hitting this snow laden branch. And I'm going to go ahead and I want some lights peeking through. I want to re wet some of that. So there were parts where I wasn't happy with my barn or the roof or whatever. And once all of this is in, it kind of hides any mistakes you may have made. And that's why I like to always say, I'm just working on an underpainting, all of these things are every, everything that I'm doing, you can uh, adjust later. But if I put all of this stuff down now and I don't have to treat it so precious, I can always make adjustments later. But I wanna have a nice underpainting going in. I'm gonna leave a little bit of uh, space in some of these, maybe I could break up a little bit of those, like there's too much here. Drop in some of the blue there. Okay, so I'm gonna end here and then start over here. So what I need to do is I need to soften this up. Just like when I put the sky color in here, um, mm -hmm. instead of having an abrupt edge where my blue ended, I kind of softened it up. That's what I need to do over here. So I'm just going to get that. Somebody would like to know um, how you avoid cauliflower forming when dropping a second color in. Uh, because I'm working while this has a sheen and it's evenly wet. So that's why I'm working kind of quick. So all of this is still has a sheen and you know, and I, do you see how the, let me zoom in on this. In here, it's starting to dry. There's no more sheen, but look at all the pinks. So there's a variety of color and value in here. And ooh, I almost touched this. And this is still really wet down here. So I don't know if you can see there's a sheen. And if this is too blue, I could drop a little bit of the red in there. Mm. The per rose, I mean, instead of saying red. And um, so I'm working really as quick as I can to make sure that this stays wet. And then as I start working down, I'm just really working in this area where I'm how, how do I say that that makes sense? I'm just working while it's wet and I'm trying to keep it wet and I'm re-wetting it as I am putting the pink in so that it can mingle. I hope that makes sense. It's, it's a great question. Um, so right now this is drying. Mm -hmm. and it's, there's no longer a sheen on here. So if I drop something in here now, it will create a blossom. Mm 
or a cauliflower or a back run, whatever you want to call it. But right here, this is still wet. So I can go in and add a little bit here. And as a matter of fact, I think this is a little heavy compared to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my almost dry brush and I'm just gonna wick up a little bit of the color that's there. Cause I don't want this to be drying any deeper than that is. So now- It's all about the, the, the point of wetness or dryness in terms of when you might get a cauliflower or not mostly. Yeah, so you wanna be working uh, you want your surface to be uniformly wet. So I'm right-handed. I want to work from the top down, but from the left this way. Uh, because if I started here working that way, I could be getting my hand in here and making a big mess. So what I'm going to do <sighs> is put some color down. And again, that looks so darn dark. But I know that as soon as I tilt the paper, it's going to want to run and it'll be lighter. So I'm just trusting. And there's a big light area there. There's a little light area here. So see how wet this is? Mm-hmm. And I'm using gravity, going to let that kind of move about, squiggle with the brush. Okay, before I get moving too carried away, I want to put a bead down here to keep that nice and wet. I'm going to grab some of my perm rose, drop that in here and there. work up here to join these. Save some little areas where the sky is peeking through and you can make up more. I mean, you know, this is a painting. I'm working from a photograph, but still I'm making a painting. I'm, I don't, I never feel like I have to be true to the color that's in the photograph, never. Um, and I wanna move that color down here so I've got a bead there so that I'm keeping this evenly wet, drop in some pinks. Let's drop in some pinks here. We've got some, you know, makes, just fill some of this stuff in. Want to keep it nice and wet, keep it moving. I have these areas drawn where I needed to have some of these shapes saved. I'm getting to a point where I have to be adding more color because this is starting to dry and I don't want blossoms. So do you see how I re-wet that right there? So you're working that edge, moving it down. Is that right? Yes. So I want to be able to have a bead there as I'm working my way down. Because this is already starting to dry over there. So I want to make sure I'm mingling some colors. We need some pinks up in here or permanent rose, I should say. And Guy, did you drop any water, clean water on the paper before you started with the blue? No, I'm doing all of this wet on dry. Okay. If I got this, if I had this wet and then put this on, I wouldn't have these crisp, sharp edges here. So like I wet the sky because I wanted to have some of these gorgeous soft edges where the clouds are, are muted, right? Or softened. 
now you're you need to move the paper or the camera a little bit because yeah perfect thank you oh you do so well thank you Yeah, so now I'm gonna use gravity. I want my bead here. So I have some obvious little areas that I need up oh, and I just got rid of one. But like I said, this is a painting, not a photograph. So I'll just go ahead and save some of those now before I lose them. Let's put a bigger swath of color in or moisture. So I'm, I'm working as quickly as possible, but I'm being as relaxed as possible. If that makes any sense. It makes sense, but it doesn't sound easy. Right. And especially when you're showing other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm saying, oh, don't judge me. Don't judge me. But uh, no, I'm just fooling. So I want to be sure that I've got a mix of colors in here. Now, I may have just made a blossom there, but it's OK. But I just want to keep moving. I see how pretty these are over here. Oh. Exquisite. So it seems like my blue is turning more on the phthalo side. So I'm adding some endanthrin to my mix. Can you lower the paper a little bit? Yes. Great. Okay, before I get too carried away and I'm moving down, this is so dark right there, but I want a variety of uh, tonal values and it's by the edge, so I'll leave that, but I can tilt at the same time and let that move. And I'm gonna go, before I uh, lose that opportunity, Go ahead, put some pinks in here and help that to move. I'm gonna use gravity. So I'm painting with the paper tilted. All right, I gotta ask, what happens if the paper dries in a spot that you don't want it to? I mean, the paint you dries. Don't let that happen. <laughs> no, uh, what I could come back later and add things, but I don't wanna be, uh, I'll wait to do that later. If that, did I answer your question? It was like I was saying, sometimes, I feel like I have to get everything right, right? But if my paper is starting to dry, I and if I go ahead and I start risking going ahead inside while it's drying, I know I'm going to be getting uh, blossoms. Hmm. So do I want to risk having a blossom? So that's a question you'll have to ask. See, like right in here, it's drying lighter. Remember how heavy it was? Mm -hmm. But because I'm using gravity, letting this all kind of pull down with me, it's lightening up as I go. So I'm just going to pull that down. Ooh, 
Ooh. And you might want to lower the paper or um, or raise the camera when you get a chance. Okay, this is starting to dry over here. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-wet it. Oh, I see. Okay. So sometimes, but it's like I said, you want to have full control over what's happening. Okay. Here's our little light areas where the light is shining through. So I want to fill around these. Let's go ahead and put some pinks in now. I'm using a smaller brush. And I'm using the brush that I had pink on it. So as I'm moving this around it, you can see that it's starting to turn pinkish. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm wiping my brush off, getting back to my blue. Uh, oh, I just splashed, splotted. Um, so I'm gonna come around here and now I'm gonna work this side. I'm gonna be working less wet so I just put my brush in water. I'm gonna be moving this way. So this snow bank, even though this is the snow on top, there's an edge here that's deeper than what's back here, right? Yeah, I see that. Okay, so. You wanna back up a little bit so that we can see the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, that's and good. And I just splatted. Dang it. You might not be able to see that. No, um, I can't. Good. <laughs> never mind. And it never happened. <laughs> yeah, never mind. <laughs> okay, so I'm going where my snowbank is sitting on the fence. And this is all nice and wet. This is starting to dry on me over here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water. Same thing over here. And I don't want this to be too dark, but it needs to be darker than what's happening here. Ooh. So I don't know if you could see, I just dropped. So just with my damp, clean brush, wherever I splatted or the pigment uh, splattered, I'm able to go ahead and just wick that up because I'm working wet on dry here. And now coming all the way across. Ooh, and this may be drying on me. So I'm going to work down here and bring it up. work down here. So I just created blossoms in here. There's a snow laden branch in here. That's kind of hard to see, but we'll get to that. So I'm just being very loose with putting that in. There's another one right here. And we could build on all of that. So now I'm not happy with this edge, but there is an edge here, but it's going to be soft. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my blue brush. I just put water in it and I'm just going to go into what's there. 
And now I'm gonna get my softening brush and I'm just gonna soften and kind of scumble along where it's dry here. And I like that edge. So it's not perfectly smooth. Okay, so. So we've got a little less than a half an hour left. Um, oh, okay. So I've already done this right here, okay? So this is drying. Ooh, where, where is this where I can grab it? This is drying. I've got a lot of pinks and a lot of blues and there's a lot of sky going through here, right? Mm -hmm. And I've got the same thing going over here. So um, I have blossoms in here. Can you see? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't look anything like out of shape. This might be a little darker than this. But look at all these branches that have to be put in. So that's going to be hiding a lot of this stuff. So that's why when I was saying you guys were asking about blossoms or back runs, and I'm saying what we're doing right now is we're doing an underpainting, right? Because as we start putting all of this stuff in, what's going to be happening is it's going to be hiding anything that you don't like. So I want... When I'm painting, I want to be as loose and quick and as fast as I can, because I can always go back and adjust things, if that makes any sense. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to put this beautiful thing that I just painted away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be starting working on some of these branches. Now, look, you can see the sun or the lamp peeking through over here. I wanna darken my barn, um, but I need to add branches. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be working with a smaller brush and I am going to zoom in. There are, let's see, there are blue branches and there's little black, there's black branches, but they're not all perfectly um, like a line. You can see that they're broken. A line is broken and there's dots and dashes in here. And so what I want to do is start putting some of that in. Now, um, let me get my brush. So I'm going to start off with a light in Danthorn and just start putting some of those things in. Ooh, that was way too heavy. And like I was just saying, a lot of these are broken, so you don't have to do the whole branch. Okay, I can't see it now. Oh yeah, I zoomed in way too much. Oh good, you weren't able to see my oops. <laughs> okay, so in some of these, do you see how I just broke that up? Yeah. So some of these are, you're seeing the whole thing, parts of it you're not. And I'm adding a blue. And in some cases I want to have a really bright blue. And I, so I'm working with the phthalo and I'm putting that in and we're going to attach that to something else. Not every, you're not seeing everything where they all connect. So what I like to do is just kind of work around. I don't want to be working in one area too long because what will happen is everything will start looking regular. And we don't want regular, we want irregular. And it's really hard to do um, irregular. So what happens is you start wanting to get, you'll get into a rhythm. And that's the most, that's kind of dangerous. 
So I like to move around. The deadly rhythm, huh? No. Yeah. Um, or just being regular. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm doing is just putting my brush down. I'm kind of working the flat of it. And some of these, you just have to pay attention to what you're, I'm always telling people, um, don't paint what you know, paint what you see, and that will keep you out of trouble. Uh, you'll ask different questions. Um, oftentimes what people need to make sense out of things, and they need to know what's on top, what's underneath, is it round, where does it go, what does it belong to? And I don't um, ask myself those things at first. And why not? Because I'm painting what I'm seeing. And sometimes, oh, so I have a story of talking about that. I painted one of my grandmothers. When I first started uh, wanting to paint professionally, I uh, got my camera, I got a macro zoom lens. And uh, what I did was I painted, um, she had these beautiful roses and I was taking pictures of them. And um, what happened was something kept moving on my screen as I was looking at the macro zoom. And as I took a look at it later, it made sense. Uh, what was happening was, the sun was hitting something that was moving and it glinted. When that thing that was moving went into the shade, it was a baby grasshopper, a little teeny tiny baby grasshopper. And I thought it was the cutest little thing. So of course I got that um, little, I got a close up of it and painted a rose um, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, then I, but I also took some shots that were a little farther away and uh, that instead of just focusing on one rose, there were three roses and some roses in the background. As I was painting that rose, I went ahead and uh, didn't ask myself the question, what is this? Or, you know, I just started painting shapes, right? Like I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was um, I didn't understand what was happening in this one area of the uh, the edge of one of the roses, but I just went ahead and painted what I was seeing. And what it ended up being, once I stood away and was looking at it, it was that damn little grasshopper. So it was his little butt and parts of his little knees, the back ends of the legs. And I didn't know that at first until I was uh, almost finishing. I just was painting what I saw, the shapes. And so I thought that was really cool. Well, that's funny. Did, did you leave him in there? Hell yeah. That, <laughs> was, that was like a little uh, happy, you know, little surprise there. So what I'm doing is I'm, like I was telling you, I'm just building up some branches and I'm, I'm moving around so I'm not in the same area. Papers folding. It's really amazing how just putting in those dark branches makes it so much more real. Yeah, and um, there was this gorgeous, I just loved when she uh, posted this on Instagram, I just felt it, I had to paint it. I was so compelled to paint. She is uh, quite the photographer. That's not her, what she just does that for fun. I have a very creative family. So I'm just going to say, because there's how much, not much time, and I want to, okay, so. Yeah, we've got 15 minutes. Yeah, so I'm going to show you 
my finished one. And I'm going to zoom in. Look at this light right here. I love it. Okay, here is my finished one. So see where my light is? So looking at the difference, I just went ahead and added a little bit more color. So you can see I've got, let me zoom in even closer. I'm going to point and see. So right in here, I've got a French ultramarine blue. And then over here, I've got it darker. Right in here, you can see how bright blue that is. And then I've got a dark. You can yeah. see how these are broken up. So there, it's not just a, a, a beautiful branch. It is a beautiful branch, but it's broken up by snow. Some of these little dots are dark and some of these are a bright uh, French ultramarine blue. I've done, uh, you can see how the barn, remember how I left it lighter out here and then I was darker in here. So I went back in and I added a little bit more in Dantherin. You can see my barn doors. Um, this is where the fence was. So I lightly put some in Dantherin in here. I, again, for people that love to do, uh, what do I want to say? Every single little detail, it's all so precious. It's not. So I just broke up some lines, put a little dot here. If I uh, did a perfect little fence, you're going to see that perfect little fence. I kind of want it to be a part of the painting, but I don't want it all to be about the fence, if that makes any sense. So I just put little dashes in here, broke them up. And same thing in here. So I've got some brighter blues and I don't know if you can see right here, but I have a super deep, dark neutral tint, but right next to it, I put a bright, bold um, French ultramarine blue there and brought that down here. And up in here, you can see all, some of these branches are bright, some of these are really light, and some of these are really dark, but they're almost all broken up and they don't all have to attach to each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard when I see people doing trees where they want everything to be attached. And I wanna, I wanna be sure that people are, they look like they belong, but they don't have to, be they don't have to be attached to be long um when i started doing the fence here i'm going to zoom in it's so hard to do a demo uh, a painting in like two hours but um so remember how i got my snow darker yes here yes. to build that up and then i just went in here and built this up with uh french ultramarine blue and then put some darks in here. And then you could go back and break this up into other little areas because right now it's kind of flat, right? But we could go back and add a little bit more and then just start breaking all of these shapes up. And I tell you, uh, a lot of my students that painted this painting and they painted this fence, they just made this straight without doing all the brambles. I think these are like blackberry bushes or some kind of vine over here. But, um, and then you can see the snow down here, the snow uh, uh, bank there. I just love this painting. I had so much fun. But look at from how I started and how blocking all of this in, then you can start breaking these things up. And like I said, attaching them without actually having to say this branch connects over here. You know, we don't need to see that because the snow is obscuring a lot of stuff. And that's why we have a lot of these broken lines, the, the broken branches. And remember how I was softening under here, but I kind of scumbled. So it gives it, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. It gives it a little bit more texture. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but you had asked, 
Michelle, a question about 140 paper. And so um, I love 140 paper. I have a, a huge rolls of it. I have it in 136 pound. I have it in 140 pound. I have it in 151 pound. And they have different um, heights. Let me uh, change camera angles. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. Um, I have one more question about the painting. Um, oh, okay. I'm seeing in the chat here, and that's how did you get the white edges on the lower branches? Like here? Well, I can't see what you're looking at now because I'm looking oh, at Oh, that's you. right. Let me switch. Uh... Nope, wrong camera. So the, that big lower branch. And this the, one? Yeah, I think the top of that where it's got a white edge where it makes it look very icy. Yeah, and then right in here. Yeah, how did you get that? Um, right from the get-go. Okay, you saved that right here, from the beginning. Here is the barn and I wiggled. And then here is my paint and I stayed away from it. Um, I also left... Let me zoom in. I left a gap here and here and here. I left a gap there. And I don't know if you can see, but I left white areas here. Mm -hmm. So when I leave those white areas, that is, so I just stayed away from those. Yeah, it's just and makes course, it kind of magical. Yeah, thank you. And so I have some here, I have some there, I have some here. So, and to me, this is kind of where everything is leading or coming away from. The mm -hmm. fence is coming in towards this. The light is coming out this way. So right in here, all of this is kind of evident that you want to save some of the whites here so that you can distinguish this from the barn also because they're almost the same color for crying out loud mm -hmm. so by leaving that white there it helped to create that iciness pretty cool huh very cool good uh good question good answer oh okay <laughs> so <laughs> now uh, you had asked, where is this light coming from? Let's do this. There we go. About 140 paper. And so I do use 140 weight paper. So this is a rose that I'm working on, but I have this stretched oh, onto wow. a wooden, uh, canvas uh, blocks. So oh, I took yeah. the canvas off instead of making my own. And then what I do is, I don't know if you could see, but the wood here is white. And uh -huh. what I do is I put a primer on the wood. I let it dry. And then I uh, stretch the 140. Once it's dry, I stretch the 140 weight paper over it and let it dry. And then I'm able to paint on here and it will stag when it's wet but it doesn't have a lot of ripple to it um, when I'm done painting what I do then is I I want to be sure that I'm not stepping on any paintings down here but this is an example of a stretched rose that I did wow that's paper yeah, so this is paper, but it's varnished. Oh. And, and I'll show you the backside if I don't knock anything else down. Mm -hmm. So you can see where there's all the staples. This is paper. Mm -hmm. And I had painted. And the reason why I paint the wood with primer is because the, as we're working with watercolors, 
sometimes it's getting really wet, right? The paper's mm -hmm. getting wet and then it dries. And then you're re-wetting it and then it dries. Well, what happens is the, the effect of water on the paper and getting the wood wet, I don't want, and wood is very acidic. Yeah. So, and wood also has oil. So I don't want any of that oil and acidity leaching into my paper or my painting. So that's why I prime the wood before I even stretch. Okay. Any paper. Okay. So um, uh, people would like to know what kind of varnish you use. I use Golden's Varnish. It's a Palmier medium. And uh, to start off with, I... Uh, use uh you can either get the aerosol and i always start off with a gloss and you can spray it on and then um you could get the gel and if you hold on i'll go get the steps so you can see what it looks like okay All right, so this is uh, the archival uh, varnish. You want to always start off with gloss. Even if you want it to be, have a satin finish like what I have, you always want to start off with a gloss because a gloss is completely transparent. One of the first paintings that I did, I used a satin and I kept um, adding layers upon layers upon layers. And after a while, the satin has a little bit of occlusion to it, so it's not a high gloss. It almost looked like my painting was underneath sugar icing. Oh. So always get your varnish on to the point where you're really happy, and then you can use a satin varnish. So I always set it in with a spray. This is a gel medium that you can paint over, right? But you want to set it in first because this is wet. If you're going like this without setting your watercolors, your watercolors can move on you and you don't want that. So you always have to set it with an aerosol spray. And then you can read the label on how to mix this with a little bit of water. I use these little strainers to strain things and it's, uh, and now what I do is I have a big ass, ooh, excuse me, a big um, air compressor and I have a gun and I spray with a big gun. So I, I put a whole suit on with the mask and the respirator and all of that, you know, and do it that way. Okay. Makes, so I don't have to worry about brush marks or little brush hairs or things like that. But yeah, so this is fun. I, and I'm gonna show you one other thing. Okay. Um, Jeanette was saying, can you hold up the satin for, for a picture so that they can see what that product is? Yes. Okay, it's polymer varnish with UVLS satin. Yeah. And it's by Goldens. The reason why I like Goldens is because it has a UV protectant, but it also doesn't yellow with age. Good to know. Now, yeah. I, I know we're getting towards the close of the demo here. You are getting lots of fan mail from uh, in the chat with people saying that how much they've enjoyed your demonstration. And oh, good. I, I always worry that I'm boring. <laughs> Not at all. It's been very relaxing watching you and um, you've had a, a lot of helpful hints for us. Oh, good. I just wanted to show you one other thing. And that is putting a watercolor onto a cradle board. Hmm. And so when you put the Mod Podge stuff, you put your paper on, you weight it, and then um, 
Once it's dry, then I hit, I spray it with a, um, the same stuff, Golden's uh, varnish, and it's the high gloss, and I set that in. But then I get the Gamblin wax and put the wax on and buff it. And it's a lot easier than doing a lot of varnishing. So you just open this wax and you get a little bit and you put it on here and coat it and evenly coat it and move it around. After, like I said, after you set your watercolor in, and then you get one of these shoe shine brushes and just buff it in. And you could go over this as much as you want, but it already has the Golden's uh, protection, you know, mm -hmm. the UV protectant. And then this is a lot easier to do than doing all the varnishing like I was showing on the big uh, painting. But the big painting, I would not be doing this because that's too much. I would feel like the karate kid, you know, wax on, wax on. <laughs> I would, okay. on the big one, I would just be using my big sprayer. But these little ones, it's so easy to get that done with uh, the, the wax. It turns out beautiful. Yeah, and what's really nice is this is 300 pound paper, but instead of framing it, you can have it on this. There's no barrier between what you're seeing and you still see the wonderful uh, paper surface and it's, it's all protected. So I love these. Can you hold up the wax label so we can get a little closer look at it, what it is? Uh, turn, keep gambling. Oh, gambling. I don't know if you can read that. Gold wax medium yeah cold it's just a cold wax cold medium wax medium yeah. there's a gambling gambling. cold wax medium yeah and okay. and you can keep adding and adding until you're happy with the finish that you have and like i said you buff that off this is easy to uh, clean with just a damp cloth also you know same thing with the uh, varnished um watercolors the stretched ones so you always put that layer of spray varnish down first and then you put your wax, is that right? Yes, you wanna be sure you're setting your, your watercolors so that you, if you're gonna use a gel varnish after or you're gonna use the wax, the one reason why I love the, uh, the varnish, the spray varnish, is it is setting your watercolor, but it's also protecting it from UV light and it's not going to yellow with age. And then you can put, like I said, the gel medium or the gel, uh, what the heck? You know, this stuff. You could either paint this on or you could use the wax, but after everything has been set. So, yeah, so what I did here was I signed my name in gold ink and then I sprayed it. And then once it was dry, then I put the wax on here and rubbed it in and added a, you know, a few applications of wax over this. And then I buffed it with this brush, just like that. And that's it. It's so easy compared to using a lot of this stuff. But I do use this stuff on the big paintings with a with a sprayer. <laughs> yes. Oh my God! Yes. Okay. And right. somebody would like to know if the paintings behind you are done from traced photographs too. Yes, all of these, all of these are projects that I've done, and this is Filoli, one of my favorite places. So this is the Camper Down Elm Tree. The tennis courts are up here. I, actually, this is where they have all the jazz stuff. The pool is this way. But this is the Camper Down Elm Tree, and this is the women's restroom now, which used to be the cabanas where the changing rooms and everything. But I love the Camper Down Elm Tree, and I didn't put the cut mark in, but 
when they fired, they let go one of the head gardeners and he took a saw and went around and there's a twin tree, like there's another one in front of the men's room. And he cut just deep enough that you could see it, but not deep enough to kill the tree. And you, it's still there. So he was mad, but he loved his tree. He couldn't kill mm. it. What a nut I am. And then, yeah, so these are um, Cymbidium orchids. This is uh, uh, Floribundas. This is Agapanthus in a blue vase with a blue shadow. Beautiful. This are my little peahens, which I, uh, it's a male peacock and a female peacock, but I love the shadows. And this was fun. I did a lot of splattering wet on wet. This was great for a lot of different techniques. A red dahlia, the swirl rose, which is the same as this big one. Oh yeah, beautiful. But smaller. And then this is my, the flowering chaos. So I have a lot of these that, um, uh, you know, that I taught for the Friday class. And um, what I'm doing is I'm putting, I'm gonna be putting these uh, as available as kits. So if you buy the kit, you can get the line drawing, the photo reference and all the video that I, I shot while making these. So that'll be up on my website soon. Very cool. Well, thank yeah. you so much. We've just You're had so, so welcome. much fun watching you paint and listening to all your great tips. And I'm so glad that you could share your time with us tonight. It was an honor. It was an honor to be able to share uh, my time with you and, and to, to be asked to do this. My Just my honor. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we'll have you to do to a link to the recording of this. Are you going to upload, send that to me? Um, yes, we will. Um, okay. Usually it takes two or three days for Joe to get the recording onto our um, CWA YouTube channel, but it will be out, be there also for. Uh, okay. Yeah. See. If, if uh, Joe could send me the link that I could upload it to YouTube. And what I'll do is I'll just cut out the meeting or whatever. Yeah, um, I will check with him and okay. see that if, if that works. I don't okay. know exactly what our what our policy is, but um, I don't see any reason why you know you couldn't do that or at least link to it. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Pat. Okay. Have, Have a nice good. evening, everyone. Thank you, guys. It was wonderful. <laughs> you shared with us. It was great. All right. Good night. Bye. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Michelle.